We will continue our discussion of cyclic groups in this lesson by proving a couple of theorems and looking at some examples of cyclic groups. The first theorem, let's let A be an element of a group G. And let's assume that the order of A is N. Further, let K be a non-zero integer. And let's let D represent the greatest common divisor of N and K. And the following is true. The cyclic group generated by the a to the power of k equals the, the cyclic group of a to the power of d, which is the greatest common divisor of n and k. And we also have the fact that the order of the element a to the k is n divided by d. Let's begin the proof. Well, we assume that D is the greatest common divisor of N and K. So therefore, D divides K. D is the divisor of K. And since D is the divisor of K, we can write K as an integer multiple of D. So we have K equals D times R for some integer R. Then we can write a to the power of k as a to the power of dr, which is a to the d raised to the r power. So we see that a to the power of k is equal to an, an integer power of a to the d. Thus, the cyclic group generated by a to the k must be a subset of the cyclic group generated by a to the d. Now we're going to show the reverse inclusion. Since d is the greatest common divisor of n and k, it's a classic result that we can write d as an integer linear combination of n and k. So we can write d as n times some integer x plus k times some integer y. Then a to the power d is the same as a to the power n x plus ky and then breaking this up we have a to the power n raised to the power x times a to the k raised to the power y but we assume that a has order n so a to the power n is the identity so this is 1 to the power x times a to the k to the power y, which just reduces to a to the k to the power y. So we've written a to the power d as an integer power of a to the k. So this shows that the cyclic group generated by a to the d is the subset of the cyclic group generated by a to the k. Since both sets contain the other, we can conclude 
that these two sets are equal. So the cyclic group generated by a to the k actually equals the cyclic group generated by a to the power d, where d is the greatest common divisor of n and k. Now we need to show that the order of a to the k is n over d. So for the second part, note that a to the power d raised to the n over d power is just equal to a to the power n, which is the identity because a is as order n. So clearly the order of a to the d must be less than or equal to n over d. Now we'll show that it can't be less than n over d. So if m is an integer less than n over d, then d times m would be strictly less than d times n over d. This equals n. Since the order of a is n, a to the power dm can't be the identity. So therefore, the a to the power d, or a to the power m, is a to the power dm, and this is an exponent less than n, so therefore this cannot equal the identity by the definition of the order of a being n. So we just showed that the order of a to the d is less than or equal to n over d, and then we just showed that it can't be less than n over d, so therefore the order of a to the d must equal n over d. Now we see that the order of a to the k is the same as the, the order of the group generated by a to the k. And we just showed that this group is equal to the group generated by a to the d. And the order of the cyclic group generated by a to the d equals the order of the element a to the d, which we just showed is equal to n over d. And that's what we wanted to show, that the order of a to the k equals n over d, where d is the greatest common divisor of n and k. So next we give a couple of corollaries to this previous theorem. And any finite cyclic group the order of an element divides the order of the group. So we saw that the order of a to the k is n over the GCD of n over k, and that is a divisor of n. Let's give another corollary. So if a group is generated by a, and the order of a is n, 
then the group G will also equal the cyclic group generated by A to the power K, if and only if the GCD of N and K is one. So in other words, if A generates the group, then A to the power K generates the group as well, if N and K are relatively prime. And we know how to count the number of elements that are relatively prime to a given number. We use the Euler phi function. So there are phi of n generators of g where phi is the Euler free function. So the Euler phi function counts the number of relatively prime numbers between one and n. So there is exactly phi of n generators of a cyclic group of order n. And to give a quick proof, the cyclic group generated by a to the k equals the cyclic group generated by a if and only if the order of a to the k equals the order of a but the cyclic group generated by a to the k has order n over the GCD of n and k and the cyclic group generated by A has order N. So the only way this equation can be true is if and only if the GCD of N and K equals one. So we see that the cyclic group generated by A has phi to the N generators. So the generators are A to any power that's relatively prime to n. Now we'll prove another theorem about cyclic groups. So let the cyclic group G be generated by A. Then we have the following two facts. Every subgroup of G is cyclic. And secondly, if the order of G is N, then the order of every subgroup of G divides N. And further, will prove that for each divisor M of N, there's a unique subgroup of G of order M. Namely, it's the cyclic group generated by A to the power N over M. So let's begin the proof of part one.
Let H be any subgroup of G. Well, if, if H is a trivial subgroup containing only the identity, then H is cyclic. So let's suppose we're dealing with a non-trivial subgroup. So assume that H does not equal the trivial subgroup containing one. Since this is non-trivial, we have an element of H that is a power of A. So then some power of A, A to the K, is an H. For some K not equal to zero. And since H is a subgroup, it must be closed under inverses. So A to the minus K is an H as well. So since H is closed under inverses, a to the minus k is an h. So the point is that k is non-zero, so whether k is positive or negative, there's some positive power of a in the set h. So h always contains some positive power of a. By the well-ordered principle, there has to be a smallest positive integer such that a to that integer is in H. So by the well-ordering principle, which states that every non-empty subset of the natural numbers contains at least element, we can let D be the smallest positive integer such that a to the power of d is an h. Then we claim that a to the power of d generates h. So the cyclic group generated by a to the d equals h. So let's prove this claim. Now since h is a subgroup and a to the power d is in h, then a cyclic group generated by a to the d must be a subgroup of h. Now we need to show that h is a subgroup of the cyclic group generated by a to the d. So let, let little h be an element of the subgroup H. And we're going to show that little h is an element of the cyclic group generated by A to the D. Now recall H is a subgroup of G which is generated by A. So H can be represented by some power of A. So H equals A to the power s for some integer s. Then by the division algorithm,
we can write s as q times d plus r for some integers q and r with r greater than or equal to zero and strictly less than d. Then a to the power r equals a to the power s minus qd, which now using properties of exponents equals a to the s times a to the d to the minus q power. Now, notice that a to the power s is an h. And we know that a to the d is an h. So the product of a to the s with a to the d to the power minus q must be an h as well. And that equals a to the r. So we see that a to the r is an h as well. But recall that d was the smallest positive integer, such that a to the d is an h and r is smaller than d, so by the minimality of d, r must be equal to zero. Therefore, our integer s equals q times d and h, which we represented as a to the power s equals a to the power d raised to the power q. And this is an element of the cyclic group generated by a to the d. We've shown that the cyclic subgroup generated by a to the d is a subgroup of h. And we've just shown that H is a subgroup of the cyclic groups generated by A to the D. Thus, H equals the cyclic group generated by A to the D. And that's what we wanted to show, that H is cyclic. So that finishes the first part of the theorem. Recall that stated that every subgroup of a cyclic group must be cyclic. Now we need to prove the second part that the order of every subgroup of G divides N. So let's begin the proof of part two. So let's let M be any divisor of N. And then we're gonna use the previous theorem conclude that the cyclic subgroup generated by a to the power n over m this is a subgroup of g the cyclic subgroup generated by a and the order of this cyclic subgroup is n divided by the GCD of n and n over m. But the GCD of n and n over, n over m is n over m. So this equals n divided by n over m, which reduces to m. So for any divisor m of n, we can find a cyclic subgroup which has order m. Now we need to show uniqueness. That is that there's only exactly one cyclic subgroup of order m for any m dividing n. 
So to show uniqueness, let's suppose we have any cyclic subgroup of order M. So suppose H is any subgroup of G. with order M. And we're going to show that H actually equals the cyclic subgroup generated by A to the N over M. Well, by part one, H equals the cyclic subgroup generated by A to the D, where D is the smallest positive integer such that a to the d is in h. And by the previous theorem, see that n divided by n over m, which equals m, this equals the order of group h, which equals the order of the element a to the d, and this equals n over the GCD of n and d. So we see that n divided by n over m equals n divided by the GCD of n and d. So therefore, n over m actually equals the GCD of n and d. And thus, n over m divides D. Since D is a multiple of N over M, we see that A to the D must be an element of the cyclic subgroup generated by A to the N over M. So subgroup H, which we know is cyclic with generator A to the D, this must be a subgroup of the cyclic subgroup generated by A to the N over M. Well, these groups have the same order M, but the order of H is M, which is also equal to the order of the cyclic subgroup generated by A to the N over M. So therefore, these sets must be equal. Therefore, H must equal the cyclic subgroup generated by A to the N over M. So this finishes the theorem. We've just shown that Every subgroup of G is cyclic. Moreover, for any integer dividing M, there's a unique subgroup of G of order M, namely the cyclic subgroup generated by A to the N over M. So for the theorems we just proved, we used an arbitrary cyclic group, which was written multiplicatively with a generator A. Let's look at these results for uh, the, the set of integers mod n, which we're going to write additively. So let's look 
at the previous results for the additive cyclic group of integers mod n and we're going to use generator 1 to represent this group which is made up of the integers mod n 0 1 2 up to n minus 1 so this set is a group under addition mod n so you'd add any two integers and reduce mod n so things look a little different when we write them additively, but th the main results of this lesson so far tell us that for each positive divisor, m of n, then the subgroup generated by the integer n over m is the unique subgroup of the integers mod n with order m. Further, there are exactly phi of m generators of this cyclic subgroup generated by n over m where again this is the Euler phi function and these generators are the elements of the cyclic subgroup generated by n over m of the form n over m times an integer relatively prime to m so they look like n over m times an integer k where the gcd of m and k equals one Let's be even more specific with an example involving the set of integers mod 12. So in this example, let's look at the set of integers mod 12, which is made up of the set of the set of integers 0, 1, 2, up to 11. Again, we're going to write this as a group of a group of integers mod 12 but technically each one of these integers represents an infinite number of integers in the equivalence class so 0 officially represents the set of all integers that are multiples of 12 1 represents the set of integers that are one more than a multiple of 12 and so on but for simplicity of notation we're just going to write the numbers 0 through 11 and treat this as an additive group then let's look at the the subgroups of the integers mod 12 so we know the subgroups look like cyclic groups generated by 12 over m where m is a divisor of 12 so if m is 12 then this just gives the set of integers mod 12 which we can write as the cyclic subgroup generated by one. So this is the whole set itself. So the set containing zero, one, two, up to 11. And this subgroup has order, let's call the order M. In this case, this subgroup has order 12. And 
let's also make a list of the number of generators. So the number of generators which is equal to phi of m, the Euler phi function. So phi of 12 is equal to four. There's four numbers in this set that are relatively prime to 12. And let's list the generators. So the numbers in this set that are relatively prime to 12 are one, five, seven, and 11. So remember these look like 12 over m times k, where k is the number relatively prime to m. But in this case, this is just simplifies to the integers that are relatively prime to 12. Now let's look at the divisor six. Now six is a divisor of 12. So the cyclic subgroup of order six is generated by the integer two. So these are the multiples of two. So zero, two, four, six, eight, and 10. So this group has order six. There are phi of six generators. So there's actually only two generators. And these two, so there's one generator. And then 10 is two times five, and five is relatively prime to six, so 10 is another generator. The cyclic subgroup generated by three contains multiples of three, so zero, three, six, and nine. This is the cyclic subgroup of order four, and phi of four is two, so there's two generators of this subgroup. Three is one of the generators. And then nine is three times three. So that factor of three is relatively prime to the order four. So the, the generators are three and nine. The cyclic subgroup generated by four has three elements, zero, four, and eight. And phi of three is two. So both of the non-zero elements of this subgroup are generators of this subgroup. So four and eight are generators. And then we have the cyclic subgroup generated by six has two elements, zero and six in it. So this subgroup has order two. Phi of two is one. There's only one generator, the number six. And finally, 12 divided by one is 12. So the cyclic subgroup generated by 12 is, this, is the same as the subgroup generated by zero. Well, this contains only the identity element zero. So there's one element in the set. Phi of one is one and zero is the only generator. So if we look at it, if we add up all these numbers of generators, we should get 12, so 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 does equal 12. And so therefore we've accounted for all the different integers in the integers mod 12, and we see which, which subgroup each integer would generate.